the objective here is to have all the tools available from drones, from VR headsets, from 3D printers, uh, IoT devices, whatever is needed, high-end graphics cards, whether you want to build a high-end gaming or whether you want to build an app. So you will be able to build that uh, as part of the innovation lab. I love making aircraft, making drones, making fixed wing aircraft. And I took drop from Manipal and I joined in SST and I'm really very excited to join. Though my school didn't provide much exposure to computer science and all, still I managed to do some various courses from like renowned foreign universities authorized by Coursera. Firstly, we have done a research project in our sixth, in our eighth and ninth standard where we won our national award and later we converted that into a business idea and we presented it at Eureka Juniors IIT Bombay and we bagged the first prize. Welcome all the learners. The whole intent of this session is to understand a small subset of few learners that we have, who they are, why they choose Scalar, what are their dreams and aspirations, where are they coming from? And we often get this question on, hey, how do you select some of these learners? So I wanted to showcase, or at least we wanted to showcase very different set of uh, learners and students coming from very different backgrounds, because we wanted to show you what your peers might look like at Scalar, of course. We also want to walk you through how uh, the life at Scalar will look like. Of course, Raj will share some aspects. I will share some aspects of it. My name is Srikanth Varma Chekuri. I'm one of the instructors here at Scalar School of Tech. I, I'm a senior vice president at Scalar. I primarily work on data science and machine learning programs. And uh, of course, I'm uh, in the very early years of your program. I would be working with many of you on your robotics, AI, and related projects. But hopefully, when it comes to phase three, we'll have some classes also. Again, over the last 13 years, I've been working in tech, mostly AI, machine learning, working at companies like Amazon, both in India, Silicon Valley, worked at uh, Yahoo Labs early in my career, built two startups, one of which got acquired by Scalar, uh, which, was, which, which was into uh, undergraduate education, computer science education, and AI. And there was another startup, which was a hardcore computer vision startup. So that, that's a brief background. Let's get started one by one. So again, I'll first start with uh, Sri Krishna. Uh, Sri Krishna Choudhury. I think he's joining from Bengaluru, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm joining from Bangalore. So my name is Sri Krishna Choudhury. <laughs> yeah, my name is Sri Krishna Choudhury. Uh, I, I got into Scalar School of Technology with 50% scholarship and I'm really tech driven from my childhood. So I love making aircraft, making drones, making fixed wing aircrafts. And um, yeah, so, uh, and I like, I like to do 3D printing also. It's my hobby to do 3D printing, 3D modeling, CAD design. And uh, I've also been an intern at National Aerospace Laboratories. So that was in 2022, uh, in my 12th year. So, oh, yeah, nice. so Again, I did. please, please. Yeah, please, uh, any questions? No, my, my point was, I mean, it's good to have somebody who loves 3D printing, aeronautics, or broadly speaking, drones, because we see how much they're used in the Russo-Ukrainian war now. And yeah. there's push by government of India to build drone startups or AI-driven drone startups now. But yeah. I had one question for you specifically. See, yeah. you, you, you're passionate about building things. That's what, that's what uh, we also saw in the interviews that you had. It's not just that you are good at tech, it's that you've built things. You also interned at uh, National Aeronautics Lab. But yeah. one question that I had was, hey, all this interest, did it help you in any way in the traditional system of education where you had to clear a JE or a NEET exam or something like that? Did it help you? I'm just curious. Like, um, to be honest, it didn't help a lot because our education system does not focus a lot on the skills of a student. It mainly focuses how good they can memorize stuff and um, write it down in an exam. So that's what that focuses on. So it did not help a lot. Enjoyed, probably would have enjoyed your physics classes in 11th and 12th because you also... Yeah, that, that's one thing which really helped in my, like both ways so what i learned in my uh, internships as well as manufacturing things as well as making stuff so that that really helped in my physics uh, depth so I, I i i was able to apply what i had learned in classroom in 11th into like uh, concepts like projectile motion for example so uh, what, what what i had i had a project on was like we had to drop uh, medicine supplies on uh, 
uh, nearby hospitals. So in that, like we had to calculate the projectile uh, trajectory of the. Uh, so we had to we had to actually design a computer controlled release point. So it's called CCRP. So what what happens is like the aircraft will fly through the uh, landing. Uh, I mean the target zone and uh, where it has to release that. Uh, would release that package in order for it to land at its target. So I, I was able to apply the concepts of projectile motion from class 11th into what I was doing at my internship at NAR. So yeah, it, it helped, but uh, mostly 12th concepts like uh, let's say electrons, uh, acceleration and stuff like that. So that wasn't really that helpful, but still like it, it makes us think a lot. So it sharpens our brain. So that's what I would like um to do get out of it so yeah. again just for all viewers what we loved about uh, uh, uh what we loved about uh, krishna was fundamentally that he's a builder at heart right he has done internship and at nal he's built things that's what we care about because at scalar our objective is to build the next generation of builders who will build companies who will build open source software who will build the next generation of hopefully ai driven drones so looking forward to having you krishna very nice to see you Thank you so much. Sir. I'm excited to join. <laughs> cool. My pleasure. Again, I would love to have somebody like you in the classroom because we can 3D print some fancy uh, uh, fancy, fancy uh, drones, at least oh. the, the propellers of the drones, because there is some recent work that I was that I was reading about, but I don't have background in drones. So learn from you also. Yeah, I, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tried printing uh, propellers, but like that didn't work out very well. So it's... We'll figure it out together. <laughs> Yeah, huh? we will figure it out together. I also have we'll never figured it out. We'll definitely figure it out. I heard that they're they're purchasing a really high end um, 3D printer at Scalar. So, it, it, yeah. ma'am said that we are purchasing multiple 3D printers, some very entry level that we can fix, break. Even if it breaks, the cost of replacement is easy and cheap. We're also building some slightly higher end ones for more precision uh, 3D manufacturing or CAD CAM. Yeah. <laughs> So really excited to use them. So because because there are a lot of constraints. Like even if a, if there is a little point zero one mm of defect in the final product, then the uh, then something like propellers it will cause vert vertexes, which will make it impossible to fly control fly in a controlled manner. So yeah, uh, we'll learn we we'll learn both ways. Problem. You teach us some, we'll teach you some. Let's build some interesting stuff. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> cool. Uh, next is Gia. Uh, so Gia, thank you very much uh, for being here. And uh, can you please introduce yourself? Okay, so hello everyone. And my name is Dia Singh. And first of all, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, so I would like to tell you that I am born and raised in Dehradun, Uttarakhand. And uh, I have been, like, I've done my uh, secondary schooling from ICSC board and my high schooling from CBSC board. So over the period of last two years, I've, you know, I've been trying to groom myself into a better version of myself by analyzing my interests and everything. So my first initial push to pursue my career in computer science stemmed out from my 100% score in my 10th grade. So since then, I've been like really interested in like computer stuff and all. Though my school didn't provide much exposure to computer science and all, still I managed to do some various courses from like renowned foreign universities authorized by courses are like University of Michigan, University of Toronto, etc. So, uh, and also I I keep a keen interest in learning new things. And if I would like to describe myself in one word, I would like to say that I'm a free spirit. I have like I have also participated in a lot of uh, debates and I've always been an enthusiastic debater since my school days. My teachers, my peers always used to commend me for that. Also, uh, what I am passionate about is about dancing and stuff. So I am a graduate from Bharatnatyam Dancing, and uh, which is by Prayag Sangeet Samiti from Allahabad. So I'm a graduate in there. So that is something about me. And uh, lastly, I want to say that I'm really excited to join Scalar and because you know I'm fairly clear that I want to pursue my career in computer science. So I, I'm pretty sure that Scalar would act like a pathway between me and my dream job. What I think is that I resonate with the purpose about empowering freshers and you know uh, learning the disrupting the BTEC traditional way of education. So I'm really excited to be a part of Scalar. Uh, Jia, by the way, I studied in Dehradun. I studied from 8th to 12th yeah. grade in Dehradun at Rastrin Military College. And uh, I picked up debating and all the oratory skills when I was uh, when I was in the school. It was a military school yeah. in called RIMC. Uh, this yeah. is the Buddy Cantonment. And uh, yeah, again, 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the reasons why uh, we would we love to have somebody like you is not just because you learned computer science. Of course, you learned computer science and you did very well in the personal interviews when we ask you computational questions based on stuff that you have learned either in online courses or by your own interest. But also that you you have a co-curricular activity which is Bharatnatyam. And we want to value that. You've spent time, you've spent energy, you've picked it up and you've put in a lot of effort to graduate from a very prestigious institution in Allahabad. So we we would love to have people like you who are all-rounders while having a strong passion and interest in computer science. So looking forward to having you. Again, we would love you to uh, start the dance club or the Bharatrat or the classical dance club. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Sounds good, Jia. Thank you very much. Again, we'll continue uh, in a short while. Uh, Next is Sushant. Um, Again, Sushant, over to you if you can introduce yourself. So, uh, hi everyone, my name is Sushant. I live in Lucknow. I uh, cle- cleared my class 10th and 12th uh, with a 98% and 97% respectively. I uh, also scored a 97 percentile in my JE. And uh, I had an interest in computer science uh, since, uh, since lockdown started. And uh, I also did a, a Udemy courses on web development, etc. And uh, currently, I'm also uh, studying a lot about uh, finance uh, investment. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. I also believe you have a twin brother uh, who's just dropping out of uh, Ramaya College of Engineering in Bengaluru. You just yes. on this a while ago, right? So can you please elaborate why he's dropping out? So uh, uh, in his college, uh, MS Ramaya, uh, he has taken computer science degree there, but uh, all the professors there do not teach uh, anything special there. So he is doing uh, all uh, himself uh, studying coachings from uh, of, from there only. And uh, so the curriculum is uh, not good. Uh, so that's why he has taken the decision to drop out of college and uh, join Scalar. Okay. So I wish him all the best. I think he's writing his NSET exam soon. But again... So, yes. so, so he has given his interview. At, uh, yes. Oh, he's in his interview stage. Okay, yes. very, very good. Hope both the twins are uh, with us and uh, we help both of you learn together. Uh, yes. But most importantly, uh, I'll tell you what what uh, what really uh, what really was interesting about you was you're very good at problem solving, right? So you're very good at math. And these were things that, of course, math is very, very important to computer science. This also came up in your personal interviews when we gave you a slightly tricky problem, which is non-obvious which is not something that you learn in typical 11th and 12th, you are able to crack these. And that's what mattered to us that, hey, here is a person who is able to pick up new concepts, apply them in innovative ways, which means he has a fundamental problem-solving ability, which is critical in computer science. So again, once again, all the best to your brother and hope to have both of you with us. Yes, sir. So I am also very excited to join the campus offline. Cool, cool. See you. See you soon. Anyway, we'll continue this discussion shortly. So uh, the next one that we have is Naga Chaitanya. Hello, so, sir. Good afternoon. Hey, hey, Chaitanya. Good afternoon. And uh, over to you. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Naga Chaitanya and I'm from Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. I studied at St. John's English Medium High School from 1 to 10th. And later I joined Chaitanya College where I did not study at all, but had different things to do, different interests and different ideas to take action upon. But I did not score. Uh, I did not clear NEET in the first attempt. I studied through online through physics, wala because the traditional teaching that uh, the un- con- un- conventional teaching that went in normal regular colleges did not suit me well. But the online teaching, which had different experience, where the learning was very good, I was able to clear NEET this time with a very good score. Very good. Very good. But uh, my. Uh, pr- Passion to solve problems has been from the start. So, firstly, we have done a research project in our sixth, in our eighth and ninth standard, where we won our national award. And later, we converted that into a business idea and we presented it at Eureka Juniors IIT Bombay, and we w- bagged the first prize. Very later, good. we uh, presented India at international summit at Singapore. Later, we were uh, given fifty thousand of funding to pursue our research and take it f- forward. And we were also given a chance to present our idea to the Silicon Valley in- investors at USA via Founders Bootcamp. 
so later on i met different people i joined a community uh, coding community called hack club later i met different people at different regions i was able to connect with a lot of people with common interests and together we have built projects that would impact the masses so we worked on alzheimer's disease um uh, storing food fruits and vegetables under refrigerator and currently we are working on a product that will be able to solve food wastage problems in the retailer segment chaitanya superb a uh, very interesting background and i am hoping you along with some of your batchmates will start yes. startups before you even graduate hopefully in phase 1 in the first yeah, sure. phase again you have a pretty good pool of startup co-founders at scaler and we would love to handhold you uh, take you through the whole journey actually build products and scale them hopefully in that yeah, sure four years itself why why wait till we graduate yes that is one, right one question for you which is uh, with all these passions and interests how hard was it for you to find a program that suits your needs uh, in in the, in the traditional ecosystem actually i find it as uh, the destiny has made me bought me here what i think is because i was not clear about what i need to do when i was studying my 11th and 12th because it it is a clear path like if you take by pc it is only neat there is nothing else but i studied science to learn things to appro- to use it to solve different kind of problems i had a different approach of my learning i was a practical learner and even my teachers at physics wala were the same physics was the very interesting subject for me so my logical thinking was really good so i scored well so that helped me a lot because the type of teaching that we got online uh strengthen my fundamentals of problem solving also like it de- develop my approach of seeing a thing at different ways got it got it so i had one question for you as somebody who has gotten a very good score in neat why are you choosing scale school of tech because uh, i think my purpose is different the purpose uh, that brought me till here uh, the journey that i had in the back i think it is driving me towards making something big than of what i could do do as a doctor i want to impact the masses at the large scale which only tech can do got it got it i i got your sense of where you are what what you are aspiring for hopefully yes. again i'm looking forward to build startups with all of you of sure. course you could tag along a few of your batchmates you sure. know a better group than your btech friends sure sure have a rough day with or you can you can scold one day and be buddies the next day that's the best team to do startups with sure sure like again, i want to form a tinkering lab there so that let's we can build great ideas now. yes let's that's right startup lab from day zero let's build something sure sure i'm happy to be your mentor as we start yeah I'm thank you actually even i am very blessed to have you because even my father is the one that introduced me to you through applied ai oh, okay. so i i learned he even came to hyderabad event i think he was there with you so that is what really he he really wanted to me to go to this path because of the journey that i had behind cool cool so, cool Cool. Again, see you. Again, we'll get back to you shortly. Sure, Next sure. Thank you. This Vijay Gaurav. Uh, hi everyone. I am from Andhra. Say, I am Vijay Gaurav, and I am from Andhra Pradesh. Basically, before I pursued uh, B Tech first year data science and engineering in Manipal University, and as he and as Sri Krishna said, I also I also worked in uh, in Ronay Club in Manipal like two months, and I got uh, and I took drop from Manipal. and i joined in sst and i am really very excited to join scale school of technology why did you drop out so this is your first thing is the teaching sir like uh, in first year the um, my sir like he is he is from mechanical department so you are so in you used to mechanical engineering right no sir data science and engineering like in first year uh, i mean some teacher same no, sir common sir uh, yeah, yeah. common sir and see the my sir is He used to come to the class and uh, he in one hour class he only teaches half an hour and in that half an hour he I mean he he prepare PPTs and he project in uh, he uh, he project in the uh, director son again uh, again different colleges have different policies I don't want to comment about them but probably yeah, I yeah, but didn't enjoy the the learning experience itself you didn't feel yes. like you didn't feel that. you're learning something yeah, yeah exactly again that's very common again i've been through a traditional college by the way i did not get through iit je i messed up my chemistry 
I think I got zero marks in my chemistry. I hated chemistry. Even today, I don't know much of chemistry. I loved math. I learned math to solve Irado problems. So I still can solve fairly good amount of calculus and problems from Irado even today, while I've forgotten a good chunk of it. So uh, so I, I joined a very small engineering college uh, in Vishakhapatnam, which is also in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I was the first batch of the engineering college. This was 2003 to 2007 batch. And I can completely resonate, Vijay, what you're saying. We had faculty members who just graduated the previous year and they would come to the class to teach us. Okay. And they were coming because they did not get a job in a top IT company. So that whole cycle is broken, unfortunately. Of course, colleges have different policies, different requirements and needs. But essentially, I, I, I can completely correlate because there were classes in my own undergraduate days where I or one of my batchmates, we would teach the whole class. Like we said, faculty, faculty, unfortunately, was not comfortable teaching. We said, we will teach our whole class. I still remember building the whole microprocessor lab, which is all these chips. We built the lab from ground up ourselves and did our experiments ourselves. Again, in retrospective, when I look back, that was the best thing because, I mean, there is no better way to learn microprocessors and hardware than building a lab yourself. So I can completely correlate what you're saying. Cool. Again, um, let's. This this is very good. Um, now, uh, now let's 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 take a. Since we have had introductions, we understand each other. I want to take a small step and ask you a few things. Right. Uh, again, each of you, please be very frank. Uh, please be honest, and please tell me. Again, we can start with. Uh, since Vijay is here, we can start with Vijay. So. Uh, what do you think were the most important things for you for choosing SST? Maybe the top two things or the top most thing for you when you said, hey, I want to join SST and drop out of, let's say, MIT, which is Manipal Institute. I said the first thing is I like about scale score technologies, like uh, instructors, sir. So who are experienced more than five years and in the industries and they have the knowledge about the industry's experience. So they, are, they have got experience in industries. And the second thing is, uh, I love the mentorship processor, one-on-one -on -one mentorship process. So, okay. uh, uh, working professionals who have been there built that as instructors. Second is mentorship, right? So, next hmm. is, uh, let's go to Sushant. Sushant, you can't repeat these two points, huh? Yes, sir, yes. <laughs> Tell me something else which you thought was the most important reason why you're joining Scale School. Maybe the topmost reason for you. Uh, so I have attended all the webinars that have been conducted by Scaler School of Technology. So uh, the first very thing is that uh, the vision behind all the teachers is uh, very much uh, that I look to look forward to. And uh, definitely second thing is the curriculum, which uh, SST has. Hey, if I, I believe you have 98% in um, JE, right? If I'm not wrong. Uh, 97%. 97%. So with that, you'll get into some of the good NITs, right? Yes. Sir. But why scalar then? You can so, get into some of the old good NITs. Maybe sir, in so, the state of UP. Sir, so I wanted uh, uh, practical learning and uh, industry level learning. So all uh, about scalar fits that. So that's why I chose scalar for that. Okay, okay. cool. So practical hands-on learning is probably the essence. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the lady in the room, Jia, why scale? Sir, so actually I watched this YouTube video by Manmeet, sir, in which they they, uh, they put the campus walkthrough video, that, that one. So uh, Manmeet, sir, said one thing, uh, which like really kicked me. Uh, that was like doctors learn in the hospitals. So why not engineers learn uh, where the you know actual process is being done? And uh, since Scalar School of Technology is uh, conducting the programming panel, or which is a IT hub, so this was like the strongest reason for me to choose Scalar School of Technology. I mean, uh, uh, again, when we were designing this whole program almost yeah. a year ago, one of the yeah. most important striking points that we thought of is where do the best doctors come from? They yes, come from the Institute of Medical Sciences or JIPMER, right? All these places have like terrific doctors who treat India's best and brightest doctors teaching the youngest younger set of doctors. So we thought, how can we replicate that? I mean, that's a very nice point. I'm glad that that point is something that you That really touched me, actually. Yeah. Good, 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 good. 
cool sounds good so uh, let me dive in a little bit uh, into let me take a slight tangent here again we'll come back to each of you as we go uh, let me just elaborate oh by the way we have two more right so let let's cover everyone so chaitanya probably the most interesting reason or the most important reason why you chose skiller uh, probably the peers that i'll be able to find here where i won't be able to find anywhere because the state that i live in or the locality that i live in i was able to find only the good ones when i was able to go to iit bombay i was able to go to silicon valley and i was able to go to singapore to represent our startups those were the minds that i wanted and the selection process also because not the brightest not all the brightest minds are able to solve the crucial problems yeah not everybody is good at chemistry not yes. everybody is good at math yes Maybe so iit chooses building things chooses based upon max physics and chemistry right but the process that you choose is based on the problem solving ability yeah so because so I, again iits also because i have a few friends of mine who are faculty members at iits okay and other top us universities the reason for them is slightly different because they have chemical engineering they have metallurgy yes chemistry is very important right yes but biotech where some of uh, some of chemistry yes is, that is right in our world we have only computer science only math matters yes yes that's right cool cool again uh, over to krishna i think krishna is the one person that i missed till now yeah. krishna the most important re- one reason why you chose scale school of tech yeah so uh, i'm a national level shooter so what i like to do is hit the bulls eye so that's what scalar school of technology does so no physics no chemistry only computer science and um, no, no only uh, only focuses on computer science so the, i i really love the curriculum at scalar school of technology as well when I, also when i was participate as uh, as chaitanya told uh, the Uh, the alumni of the uh, scale school of technology would be very good so uh, while i was p- participating in wro which is world robot olympiad i was having a really hard time finding good teammates so i hope i'll uh, i'll be able to do that with the alumni network of scale school of technology i hope you will find them in the 200 batchmates that you have of course alumni are always there to help you yeah, i mean the um, i mean my classmates only yeah Sure, sure. Cool, cool. Sounds good. So, uh, let me let me take a small diversion. Again, most of the points you said are very valid. Uh, I hope uh, I hope they give a sense of why you chose. And again, I made sure that each of you tell me different things so that we are not repeating the same thing as a priority for everyone. So, uh, one other thing, let me give you some personal examples also so that you can connect. I've been a hiring manager at Amazon for about five years. I've been very fortunate. who have gone to the world's top universities actually uh, when i used to work in silicon valley our office uh, is on university avenue which is the avenue at the very end of the avenue is stanford university and i had friends of mine doing phd at that point of time and i got to interact with some really bright students because my team being a research team used to go to the top us universities to hire of course i was also having a small team in india so we were also hiring so one thing that i observed was uh, most again this is as a hiring manager or as an interviewer experience uh, one thing that i uniquely found in most universities was hey I, i mean i would typically do the manager round or one of the last rounds where i would say what have you built except for a handful of really bright students at stanford or carnegie mellon i have not seen enough people bring what they have built to the interview or at least showcase a demo or at least talk about it right so this is what i felt as a hiring manager that hey this is missing again i've been to almost all the major top institutes of india and also the us to hire i've only seen a handful of people who would say hey here is something that i've built this is life and there are like 100000 users who are using this and this is the benefit that it's creating right so I, again it could be a non profit it could be open source it could be for profit startup it could be anything but with impact so again by the way there are also ai specializations in some of the top universities like for example i'll give you a personal example i studied machine learning at indian institute of science which is india's top research institute and i'll tell you a very interesting joke no it's it's a fact actually in my very first week after joining yahoo labs my manager uh, rushi bhat a great friend of mine um, he said varma we are using so and so algorithm called maxim entropy models uh, and um, please see how the code works just learn how everything works i said hey why are you using such a silly model i've studied this fancy algorithms called support vector machines we will use it he challenged me and he said i'll give you one week 
see if you can solve the problem with SVMs. All the theory I learned, all the mathematics I learned in college just went down the drain in one week. Of course, the math helped me eventually in life. But then I soon realized that, hey, all these beautiful equations, I can't solve a problem with billions of data points. Right? I mean, the technology didn't support it at that point of time. Today, we can do it using more advanced stuff. But this was in 2009. So uh, having that manager, Rushi Bhatt, as, as a mentor for me, I unlearned a lot of things that I learned at India's top research institute and learned new things. So again, while there are universities with AI specializations, etc., we see this lack even today. And I've also seen a lot of instances where brilliant kids go to the top universities of the world but they graduate as software engineers one or data scientist once. I'm hoping that in this ecosystem of scale tech, we'll be able to graduate software engineer two, also called software development engineer two, SDE two, or data scientist two. Now, shifting gears again, just to reiterate, we have selected many students based on a holistic approach. We have people who are 99 percentilers. We have people who are 70 percentilers in the typical competitive exams that you have, whether it's NEET or JE, et cetera. We have people who are debaters, like uh, I believe Jia, who are interested in debating. We have Bharatanatyam dancers. We have people who have built startups or who have tried to build startups. We have people who are good at robotics all the way to sports. And what we have looked for fundamentally is the aptitude and attitude. Aptitude being, hey, can you solve math problems, which are critical for computer science? And do you have the right attitude to be the builder? Because if I have to summarize what we want to do here, we want to build builders. Do you have the inclination? Again, a builder need not be building software only. It could be building, like Jia could uh, build a great uh, uh, great app which, which teaches people who are bad at dance, dance using AI algorithms. Why not? I mean, because we are novices. I mean, I can't even do one step. So if you can build an AI app with which kids can learn Bhartanatyam, let's say. That's I mean, a great idea. That's impact, right? So. Again, we have also had instances where we have rejected students who had great percentiles in JE and NEET because we felt that they didn't have the right attitude to learn and build things. At the same time, we felt their learning is limited to the NEET exam or the JE exam. Because when we gave them a, you know, a personal interviews, we pushed them slightly outside their comfort zone. Right? Even in our exam, there is a learnability section where we give a problem different from what they typically see. And we say, can, we, can they solve it? Can they learn something quickly and apply it? And we have seen, again, this, this is a fact that we have had some great JE percentilers whom we had to reject for various reasons, including attitude, ability to learn, etc. So again, over to you, Raj. I think, Shrikan, one question that everyone might have is, we understand that aptitude is important for you to learn computer science. But why is attitude important is a question that almost a lot of parents ask very early on as well. Why do you have the second round of interview? Why do we why do you check for dreams and aspirations? Why is it important for you? Because most universities, they would stop at the entrance test. And if anyone goes one layer above, they'll stop at the math interview stage. Why do you go one level above? What is the reason to do that? Is Actually, that Actually, some of the world's top universities have a personal interview. Like MIT has it even for their UG program. Yes. Stanford for their undergraduate program has it. Uh, CAT, uh, I mean, IAMs have it for their uh, for their MBA program because they're looking for character, right? They're looking for what you have achieved, what you have built, what you have done. So it's not that Indian universities don't have it. It's just that at IIT scale or at NEET scale, it's not possible for them to do it. Of course, they have their own real world constraints. But coming back to why we do it is because we want to find these unique aspects of a learner. I'll give you a simple example. In one of my interviews, uh, uh, again, I'm just posing a real problem, a real world problem that we encounter, right? And the, the, the candidate simply said, hey, what if we solve this? Can we solve this, Verma? Can we solve this using AI algorithms? I liked his thought process that as soon as I give him a real world problem, he's thinking, hey, this is done in Google Meet. Why can't I do it here? So I like that aspect that they're connecting the dots. They're thinking like problem solvers, not just JE problem solvers, but real world problem solvers. So what we want, the, the attitude part is, are they people who are looking for a problem and looking for a way to solve? Do they give up easily? I've also been in some interviews where you, you put a small hurdle, they will give up. 
right? I want people to say, I'm not giving up because when you build actual technology, 100 things will break, right? I'll give you a small example. Recently, uh, I was just building a small toy app for my elder son who is five years old. And uh, he uh, he loves chat GPT because he says, uh, in Telugu, he says, Nana, Nana means Papa or Dad. He says, I really like that you're talking to it and it gives you an answer and you're reading it back to me. I said, come on, this we can build it. So I built a very small app using the APIs in like a couple of hours where he can talk to the system. It will give him an answer, right? And it's a small app that could be built in like two, three hours. And he enjoyed it because I saw a problem. See, we want people who see a problem, solve it. Solve it then and there. It doesn't take much of a time. And that's what we want. So we look. the attitude part is, do you have the attitude to look at problems and say, I'm going to solve it? And of course, there'll be hurdles. Not every problem can be solved easily. Are you willing to go through those hurdles? And have you solved problems in the past? For example, there are a few people who are 70 percentilers in JE, whom we may have missed if you had not looked at their co-curricular activities, right? Or, or we would have missed somebody who is a who is a Bharatanatyam dancer or who is a debater. We want to have all this coalition of people. That variance is super duper important. If you go to Harvard Business School, they're trying to hire somebody who is an ex-serviceman. They're trying to hire somebody who is a marine seal. They're trying to hire somebody who's a startup entrepreneur. That variance of attitudes and aptitudes and skills and hobbies is super duper important because, I mean, if you don't know Bharatanatyam, how will you think about building a Bharatanatyam, an app to teach Bharatanatyam to kids using AI, right? So attitude is equally important. Actually, I would say it's at least 50% important and 50% is aptitude. Perfect, perfect. I think that answers the question. Now, if all of the theory that we have, all the pedagogy that we have, it does not make any sense if we don't do it the right way. So one question that almost I think all the students right now who are here on the podcast and everyone who's watching might have is, what does life at Scalar looks like? What does day in life of a student at Scalar looks like? How is it different from any other universities? We, because we have been talking all of these things that... You, how our program is different from everyone else, but how does the day look different for everyone else? And like the approach that you were talking about, how you use ChatGPT to build a very simple model for your child. Like, would you be using the same approach while teaching these students? I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. See again, what, how we are teaching the pedagogy might change from phase one to phase two to phase three, because in phase one, they're learning basics. In phase two, they're interning. In phase three, they're learning advanced stuff. So the pedagogy will change slightly. But let's talk about the initial few months. You would learn the foundations from industry experts, people who have built actual software. You learn the basics, whether it's programming, whether it's data structures, whether it's mathematics, whether it is how to build a website. Again, not just not just drag and drop, but the back end of it. How do distributed systems work? How do computer networks work? How do operating systems work? You learn all of that, but from a practical standpoint. Everything, for example, when we teach computer networks, one of the things that uh, we, were, we were creating is, Let's enter a URL, explain how, if you enter google.com, how does the page come about? Let's explain the whole journey. If I explain that whole journey, you'll understand computer networks, all right? It's as simple as that. So we want to explain that whole journey, what happens underneath the hood and how do you build that? Like you have a, let's assume you have a 90 minute class, you have a practical session. So for every X hours of class, you have X hours of lab. Labs are mandatory. And for every class, you will build something. For example, in the first 18 months, of course, the sky is the limit. We need not be limited by this, but this is just a small sample of what we want people to build. We want people to build something like Google Docs or Google Sheets that all of us have used. Let's build it. It's not trivial. Let's build that. We want, again, this is part of your curriculum. We want you to build a website that can that can take care of 100,000 people coming to the website simultaneously. Let's build the backend engine for it. How do you store data? How do you retrieve data? How do you do search? And now combine all of them to build us to build a scalable e-commerce app. Of course, when you build that, you learn a lot of things that happen underneath the hood. But of course, this is by no means limited to this. Again, I would love to hear from each of you what you would want to build in the first 18 months. Let's go. Let's go around the table. Jia. I would definitely would love to go with your idea about building an app where I can you know teach Bharatanatyam and there would be like it would be embrace our uh, it would be something which will embrace our culture more and you know enthusiasm the new learners so I would love That's to go good. with you. I have a very good friend of mine uh, 
from my childhood days who is also a classical dancer yes, so sir. probably both of you can sit together he's also she's also yes, an engineer uh, she's also a product mm -hmm. manager now and again the basics of it are simple of course the mathematics underlying it could be complex that you yes. might learn in phase 3 but the basic stuff the graphics and all yeah uh so you want to detect people right you want to detect where the arm is where the face is yes. the leg yes, is where the toe yes. is and then course like, correct there are yeah. such people libraries third party libraries by companies like google which we can use of course the mathematics of how it works you may not be able to learn the first 18 months but you can learn it in the phase 3 so okay. let's build that this is a fun yeah. project yes cool i would love my kids also to learn the basics of dance sure, sure. i think we can all learn <laughs> I, I'm, I'm terrible at it. So, yeah, <laughs> Krishna. Yes. So, I would love to make a AI-based cat design tool. So, it's like SolidWorks, but you don't have to design anything. You just have to type in the constraints. So, for example, I want a 400 by 400 mm quadcopter frame to be designed. Uh, so, what I have to do is I just have to type in the constraints, and the cat tool will make it. And I just have to take the STL file and take it to my 3D printer, and I'll just be able to print it right off. So impossible today. Impossible today. I know it's, it's possible. Pretty... It's possible. We are in the. Uh, I mean, there are there are AI models to which you just give text. Does anybody know about these uh, this technology called stable diffusion? Okay, I'll tell you something that my wife and I were playing with. So we have a younger child who is two years old. so we took a photograph of his when he was one month old right because it was covid we could not get any photo shoots for him and all that so we took a photo of him there is this algorithm called stable diffusion which is a cutting edge ai algorithm we just gave the baby's picture i said this is the face don't don't fiddle around with the face and i just said i want the baby wrapped in a beautiful cloth with photographer taking the photograph and it would fill in all of that we sent it to our family and they're like dude when was this photograph taken then i had to explain to them that this is ai generated and uh, there i mean that images are images are very easy because there are billions of images on internet so it's like dali it's it uh, yeah stable diffusion is slightly better than dali okay yeah very similar to dali in the in the in the in the outcome perspective stable diffusion is also open source and stuff like that okay very nice i mean i just took like thankfully couple of days after my work and i installed everything fiddled around with the code and now we play in the evenings with that so okay. what you are saying is very possible what we can do is uh, take sketchup because sketchup uh, you know sketchup software right yeah like, yeah so with sketchup you can easily write plugins on top of sketchup using ruby yeah right so what if we write a we write a plugin where you type say hey i want 400 by 400 mm with so and so grooves blah 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 it will actually create that okay of course it's not trivial but uh, it's a fun project it's it it's is, a your it fun project let's do that definitely vijay yes what do you want to build sir i want to build an app like if you are traveling from hyderabad to bangalore uh, you have a business i mean very emergency business meeting so you are very hungry so when you go to a restaurant and you order something uh, they will take like Up to like to well one hour. To serve, they will take half an hour, minimum half an hour. So, if you are create or build an app, in that if you tell the, if you tell to the restaurant like which items to be uh, to be made and and what at the exact time when you will come to the restaurant. So, uh, by that time they will prepare they will prepare the food and they will bring that. So it make easy like it will take up to like twenty uh, minutes or half an hour. I think Starbucks has an app like this. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's been a while I used it, but uh, yeah, we can scale it to all small restaurants also. Starbucks, of course, yeah, has sure. a tech team they can build, and you can build something that will help even the smallest restaurant, smallest chai wala. You can say, "I'm coming for the chai by in ten minutes. Can you please prepare it? Adrak chai with like or Irani chai, whatever you want." Cool, very nice idea. Again, a real problem for sure. Again, let's build some of these, or hopefully more complex things than these also in the eighteen month period. also we have this concept called super mentors of course you have these mentors with whom you have a one on one every month mentors are typically engineers software engineers working in the industry or data scientists in the industry but this super mentors is something that i am super excited about myself which is hey you get these people who have built like unicorn companies who built really crazy big startups and here is an opportunity for you for a fireside chat 
with these people once every quarter. Again, what is interesting here is you can say, hey, uh, what because these the reason they've become successful is they're able to predict what the next four to five years of technology landscape or startup landscape might look like. Right? So the one way to utilize this is ask questions about, hey, how do you think she will evolve so that you can build it today and wait for the wave to come, right? So again, there are that, that's one way to utilize this phenomenal opportunity. Again, there are very, very few universities in the world. Even in most universities, not every student gets an opportunity to talk to super mentors. For example, Stanford invites some of the top uh, CEOs, CXOs, founders, but only a handful of people get to interact even there. But I'm hoping uh, uh, all of you will get to interact with the super mentors once every quarter and uh, understand how the world is moving from their viewpoint or vantage point. Cool. One other thing that uh, I'm looking forward for are the clubs because we don't have much of AI per se in the initial uh, phases because you're still learning the basic foundations of programming, mathematics, etc., data structures and other aspects of foundational computer science. But tech clubs and innovation labs is stuff that uh, we would love to spend on. Again, just for all of the audience, we are building this innovation lab as as I believe uh, uh, as I believe uh, Chaitanya was also mentioning and uh, Krishna was also mentioning. The objective here is to have all the tools available from drones, from VR headsets, from 3D printers, uh, IoT devices, whatever is needed, high-end graphics cards, whether you want to build a high-end gaming or whether you want to build an app, whether you want to build, let's say, the next VR tech, because Apple is, uh, anyway, Apple just announced its VR headset, and hopefully that will be the next big revolution in UX and UI. So you will be able to build that uh, as part of the innovation lab. The objective here is for you to build applications, to build products, which could eventually become startups or non-profits helping society, or even great open source software. Why not? Anything, building things matters. Uh, again, I would love to hear from each of you what tech clubs you want to begin and why. Let's let's go one by one. So again, the, is the question clear? What club you want to start and why? Okay, I'll, I'll go first while you think about it. I would love to see an AI club where we build applications that can have impact of hundreds of millions of people across the world. With AI, it could be healthcare, it could be uh, it could be fitness. Uh, it could be dance, it could be uh, teaching younger kids, it could be learning languages, as in human languages, not Python, Java, but let's say French, Spanish, Telugu, Tamil, Gujarati, etc. So again, the tons of possibilities there, and I would love to be part of that as a mentor and um, as as a co as a co-conspirator uh, to break things with all of you. Cool. Over to let's go one by one. Let's go with Krishna. I would like to make a. AI based uh, drone club. So which would be having drones, drone which would be flying indoors and um, they would be controlled by AI. So they could do simple tasks like um, anything like bringing some object from the other side of the room to this side of the room, or maybe like navigate through the room. We can, we can think more about that as well. So, yeah. I remember Intel made some open source software where you could take your Android phone or iPhone and they made a very simple car on which you can put the Android phone or iPhone. Its cameras are used for distance and it could go and go, it could navigate the rooms very easily. You want to build a drone version of it. Yeah, exactly. It's a great idea. We could integrate a mobile phone into a drone. So yeah. But mobile phones are heavy, right? Yeah, it would, it would take, we would, we would, we might have to like modify the mobile phone in order to reduce weight and remove all the weight parts, just have the exactly. motherboard or probably yeah. the simple simpler. Exactly. Cool. Again, drone club. Of course, AI driven better. Cool. Sushant? Uh, I was joining the competitive coding class. Uh, I like to solve uh, problems which are difficult. You have good company because Anshuman uh, was uh, representing India for International Collegiate Programming Contest, which is literally the college level Olympics for coding contests. And mm -hmm. Anshuman could be a very good mentor for you because even after graduating, is he has mentored people at IIIT for their uh, for their college programming club, and which also goes on to do very good stuff at collegiate programming contest. So yes, so you have somebody to mentor and guide you. Again, a good programming club with a programming culture is a must. Good, probably you could you along with some of your friends could get that going. Gia. So 
sir obviously first of all i would like to build a dance club and then i have two more ideas in my mind uh, which is like uh, i there was an option in my school to learn a third language so i speak a little bit of dutch so i want to build a third language club also where we can uh, you know explore and learn new languages and thirdly i want to work in a robotics club you might have to say fourth language for some of us who already have who already don't think about this so we'll call it just plus one language whatever language yes, is for example i know telugu which is my mother tongue i've learned in the okay. no english so three plus one we we'll learn the fourth language okay that's and it fine. can't be a programming language okay okay let's do that uh, there is this yeah. very nice app um, uh, from the steam at carnegie mellon um uh, i keep forgetting the name of the app um, it's a language learning app it's a public it duolingo duolingo exactly right. duolingo So Duolingo is a terrific app that I love. Uh, again, one of the reasons is their co-founder was a was an AI prof at Carnegie Mellon, and I've been following him his own journey of entrepreneurship, etc. So probably uh, as part of this club, you could build something like Duolingo. With, with yes. the, there are also some nice AI startups on teaching kids new languages. Hmm. So we can do some of that. Why not? Cool, cool. Uh, Chaitanya. So I would love to start an entrepreneurship club. I would love to start it, and I would love to join a music club because I'm also interested in learning guitar. So. Okay. I'm not the artsy guy, but of course, I'm sure you'll have lot of company. Yeah. If you if you want to generate music algorithmically, I can help you there. But <laughs> I don't know devices. Okay. Cool, cool. This is good. This is good. So uh, again, I'm very happy to hear that many of you have nice ideas. Let's start as many clubs. Let's have the critical mass. Let's make sure that every club has at least three or four people. More the merrier, and I'm sure you'll find lot of people within Scaler who want to be participating with you, either as mentors or participants. So one more thing that I wanted to wrap up. Uh, very uh, again, first and foremost, thanks a ton to all of you who have taken time, who have participated, who have who have been very open about what you think, about how you see it, why you chose Scaler. That's why I was also very clear on why we chose you. Actually, I was going through all the interview notes to see what was unique about each of you. But at its very core, if somebody asks me why why should somebody choose Scalar School of Tech, it's very simple. I'll try to summarize it. If you are interested in computer science and if you want to be a builder, solving real world problems with a great peer group and instructors who have built things, who have built startups, who have built products across the world, this is the place for you. That's how I would summarize it. If I have to summarize it in like thirty seconds, stop underestimating yourself. each of us is unique in a different way each of us are circumstances of where we come from what we have learned nobody is same as long as you are interested in computer science and you want to build things just apply just go through the exam if you make it great again please be yourself in the personal interviews we are not looking for people again i've been through some personal interviews where people just keep saying something which they have not done and it's very easy for us to detect it like many of us have done hundreds of interviews at large tech companies we'll find it in like 30 seconds we'll find that ye bande ne ye kiya hi nahi right so be yourself be honest come from i mean leverage ask yourself what makes you unique right everybody everybody is unique in a different way most of you are what 17 18 year olds right in this 17 18 years of your experience you would have done something unique probably again i was talking to somebody uh, one of the interview one of the interviews that i was he said Or I am not comfortable in English. I said, "Cool, no problem." I said, "If I understand Hindi, I can speak reasonably decent Hindi." I said, "Up Hindi me baat karo, up fluently baat karo, or up fluently explain karo mujhe." And he did a terrific job. I said, "Okay, Hindi sikha, English sikha na hai na, wo se sikha inge ham." But I loved your confidence. Whatever your mother tongue is, if I understand it, I want you to explain. If somebody said Tamil, I would have been lost. If somebody said Telugu, yes, I'm game. right but again each of us have a different experience each of us come from different backgrounds ask yourself what makes you unique and that's what matters as long and that's what is part of your attitude also not everybody is equal everybody has their strengths just discover them highlight them but be honest perfect perfect and so one more, one more thing about about this peer group one more point i wanted to add people who are already selected see all of your peers are smart in some way or other find your nook find your corner find your game i'll tell you when i when i joined in indian institute of science we were a batch of about 30 people these are the top 30 rankers 
right? In this entrance exam called GATE. This is for master's program, right? Terrific student. I mean, they were like brilliant guys. What the, I, I was, while my all India rank was two in the entrance exam, I quickly realized that boss, these guys are super duper smart. Okay. So I went and asked myself, what is that nook or corner that I can play? Find your own unique thing. I realized, hey, I really loved math and I loved AI. This was when AI was not fashionable. This was not, this was when machine learning was not fashionable. I took all the hard courses to learn AI and build some simple solutions because my professor was uh, very, very helpful in building actual solutions. A unique professor, Professor Chiranjip at Indian Institute of Science, who is now the chairman of the computer science department. He said, Verma, let's build this app. So when it came to interviews, I said, my CGPA is not the highest. I'm not the brightest kid student here, but I spent time learning machine learning. And these are the stuff that I've built. And that's what interviewers loved. And that's what helped me in the long run. Right? So always find that small piece of the world where you're better than everybody else or which you can create your own unique aspects. Of course, it will be foolish for any of us to compete with GI and Bharatanatyam. Right? Obviously. So she will have her strength. Similarly, let's say somebody, uh, uh, let's take Sri Krishna, right? He will have an advantage in drones, right? You either pick up those skills or let him play that advantage. You give something else, you build something else that is your own unique turf. So play to your strengths, create a turf of your own and win there. Again, we want all the 200 people to succeed in their own turfs. Somebody might say, I want to start a nonprofit. Please, I want to create world impact with hunger or with poverty or education. Please do that. Somebody might say, I want to build an open source software. I'm hoping somebody might even say, I want to build a political party. Why not? Please do that. Right? So everybody has their advantages. Play to your advantage. Perfect, perfect. Again, I loved interacting with each of you. 